Hey everyone, it's Army Gaming. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to Monster Legends. Welcome to an exclusive first look at the brand new Blossom Mythic Monster, Nereida the Danan. She is both a nature monster and a magic monster. From what I've seen right now in the leaks, she's actually my favorite monster, but she's an arrow shot monster. So if you want this monster, you are gonna have to dish out some money. Huge shout out to SP for giving me everything I need to make this video. They provided the monster, all the cells needed to take this monster to rank 5, any gems I use will be reimbursed, and they also provided the food to feed this monster all the way to level 150. Yeah, so I definitely want to start off with her because she's able to trait, disable, remove positive effects, so she's going to allow me to use the other Blossom Mythics. Okay, so yeah, we're going to start off with this monster because so far from everything we've seen, this monster has impressed me the most. But more importantly, she's able to cleanse enemy status cast from Megaton. She's able to trade disable, which means the meta in PvP right now is taunt dodge area. Once I get rid of the taunt trait on the on the taunt monster, my allies are going to be able to attack. And especially, we also have a lot of deniers in this Blossom era. She's going to be able to synergize with some other monsters. So you're definitely going to see her around in a lot of other videos. But she's also the arrow shot monster, so hopefully this figures out whether or not you actually want to spend money on this monster. So let's start off with her info. So evolving trait. Yeah, she actually has five traits. So I'll be honest, the immune to daze and the immune to blind, I'm not a big fan of it. She's more of a supportive monster. She has cleansing skills. Um, I think she can heal too. It doesn't really matter if she was blind or dazed, considering you are doing a skill that helps your allies. Now, if accuracy reduction would have prevented you from maybe landing a cleanse on your team, then this would be useful. But honestly, her rank zero and rank one trait, they're almost irrelevant to me. At rank 3 she gets Bulrog, this is where things get really good. As you all know, when a monster has Bulrog, it is really hard to land Denial on them. 50% of the time they block negative effects, which includes tortures and Denial. So even if the enemy tries to possess, hey, maybe you're saved. Um, you get a Status Caster Poison, which is really good. That reduces damage output by 20% from the enemy monsters. And then considering you have beasts in the game, you have other monsters that do random tortures, you could potentially start off with a lot of random um, dots, well, guaranteed poison, and some random dots against the enemy. Now, of course, if there's a Megaton monster, the Megaton monster will absorb it. And also, if you're using the Nature Beast a lot for offense, well, the Nature Beast does poison, so this kind of is just redundant. You have an area torch immunity, which is super valuable. This blocks the dot effects. Um, keep in mind though, if you're going up against someone that has 7 sins and they hit you with a nanovirus, unfortunately you won't be able to apply your status caster area of torture immunity because 7 sins activates at the start of the battle before even your your area of torture immunity gets to kick in. So that'll be unfortunate, but other than that, if you got hit with a poison, a quicksand, an ignite from the enemy, and then this monster goes and it's like, hey, I'm cleansing everything away. So I really love the bulwark and I really love the area of torture immunity. Um, the poison's good too. I don't really care for the blind and daze traits. But yeah, she is, so far, of the new monster, she's the first to have five traits. Uh, let's see. Nereida has been one of the forest key ambassadors. She can speak the language of monsters, fairies, plants, and spirits easily and always make sure everyone's voice gets heard. So now that a new era has blossomed in the Cardinal Forest, this beloved fairy has been reborn into a mythic creature. And by the way, when I say her name, I'm going to be changing between like English and Spanish. Sometimes I'll say it completely wrong. So yeah, she is a nature and magic monster. Let's take a look at her skills. Let's change skills. All right, actually, sorry, we need to compare her stats to the other monsters in the game. So let me pull that up. So right now I'm categorized by the highest life stats and the main monster is going to be categorized in green now. And if you saw the Mr. Beast video, you would know that I messed up on Silex. So right now I don't have stats for him, but we're going to compare him to everyone else. And we also have the Doomsday monster. So she's quite tanky at 130, 894, tied with that of Orgoronk. He is the tankiest of the Doomsday era. In terms of a power stat, and well, I guess we can compare it to the other Blossom monsters we have info for. She is slightly below them, but honestly, I wonder if this is, the, technically this is, this is the second lowest for the new era. And don't forget, Queen Zara she has a life increase at the start of the battle, so she's actually super tanky. Um, but yeah, so technically squishy for the Blossom Era, but really, not really. We're still going to be using Corrupteds and Metro Monsters and Doomsday Mythics, um, even with this new era of Blossoms. Um, honestly, right now it feels like she might be the only one that's used, just based on what we've seen. Power Stat, she actually packs a punch. 10,736, titled out of Bionic, the YouTuber monster. Only slightly a few less points than Elvira Demon Slayer, the Lord and Heritage Killer, and Shiv, the exclusive bounty up monster. My goodness. My goodness. So yeah, for a non-attacker, she packs a punch. And in terms of a speed stat, she's quite fast, uh, slightly less than Mr. Beast, Eco, tied with that of Golemnoid, Uriel the Divine, Emerus, 
Yeah, so those three monsters. So pretty good stats all across the board, I would say. All right, now we can look at skills. So Fairy Deity deals modern nature damage, applies poison, spammable, um, spammable poison skill. Magical Treasures applies torture immunities to allies and life freedom to allies. I love this because it is zero stamina, zero cooldown. The one thing that could have made it better is if it was torture immunity, life regen, and stamina regen. But nope, SP stopped at the life regen. So again, if you have a lot of dots and considering you take on uh, seven sins a lot, and seven sins, by the way, also drains your stamina, it's a great way to protect your team and constantly be cleansing torture from them. And you can also recover life. So any any damage you took from the dot, you can recover that life. Again, assuming you don't get hit with a nanovirus from seven sins. All right, we have Lull's Blessing. Removes negative effects and applies life regen to one ally, gives one extra turn. Amazing skill. Love the skill right here. 26 stamina, that is very low on a two turn cooldown. So there's so many ways to use this skill. If your main attacker was denied, hey, cleanse denial, now you're able to attack. If your monster was about to die because of torture, cleanse, now they're able to attack. So this is amazing. By the way, spoiler, this monster can also hold a, um, a staff relic, so you can also recover stamina from the monster. So that when they go, they're cleansed, they have life regen, they, have stamina, they, they recover the stamina, they're able to attack. Master Breast deals moderate nature damage and applies Trade Disable Poison 2, but Trade Disable, amazing, on a one turn cooldown, guys. On a one turn cooldown. That's crazy. That is insane. Love this skill. Um, Alright, uh, the Spear of Law removes positive effects on one extra turn. Another amazing skill. Doesn't deal any damage, so you don't gotta worry about triggering 7 sins, right? Especially when you're taking on Clash and Sparkus and those top monsters that, that run 7 sins. Nope, I'm just gonna cleanse your MT away. And then I'm going to trade disable. That will trigger 7 cents, but that's fine. Because now your attacker is able to attack the main threat. So this is going to be really good. So you have a purr. Where's the purr? You have a... No, sorry. This is the cleanse ET. And then this is a remove positive effects. So, yeah. We're going to see this monster in action. You have an AoE trade disable that also does poison. For PvP meta, I'm not a big fan of this. Just because it's a lot of taunt dodge area. But if for war, this is a skill you're definitely going to utilize. If you're facing a status caster megaton monster and two monsters that don't have dodge area, you're literally going to be able to do sphere to get rid of MT, right? Status caster MT. And then you do cauldron to get rid of everyone's trait. And then you can follow up with a deny or you can follow up with a strong AOE. Maybe your attacker's buffed and does a strong AOE. Like, oh my gosh, you can go back to doing spec and absolute zero everyone. Like there's so many combos this opens up more so for war than for PVP. Um, let's see. We have Laia Fail, uh, removes negative negative effects from and applies torture immunity. So this is a better version of Magical Treasures. Obviously, the huge difference is 42 stamina cost to zero and spammable to not spammable. But the reason this is better is because you cleanse negative effects first, then you apply torture immunity, and you heal by 30%. So even if you attacked into seven sins and all three of your monsters have nanovirus, Magical Treasures, you can't apply the torture immunity, so you can't cleanse the seven sins. With this skill, though, you would cleanse Nanovirus first, then Torch Immunity, and then you're good to go. So then you can keep attacking. Like, maybe you have an ET monster like Shiv, and now she can attack into Seven Sins, and you just exhaust Seven Sins. Like, this is a great skill. And then you have a skill that deals moderate nature damage, removes positive effects, and 50% chance of possession. Um, I, I don't like that it has a 50% chance to possess. Um, I wish... I guess if you partner up with someone that increases their accuracy, it'll be better. The way I see this, it's just a... It's just a positive effect removal. It's a purr. It's not really a possession. Most of the time, possession won't land, especially when you're going up against monsters that have hard and tough and especially bulwark. So I'm iffy on this skill. I think it might still be worth running, but I don't know. We got to see. The main, 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 main skill is... Where is it? Maybe there won't even be room for it. The main skill is the purr, and then the nur, negative effect removal, positive effect removal. So spear and blessing. These are your two main skills. I'm going to say single trade disable once again for PvP purposes, not AoE. And you'll, you'll see why once I do battles. Um, where is it? Trade disable. There we go. So master the single trade on one turn cooldown. And then we're doing the the team one. The one situation, let's see. The, the time you might go magical treasures is if you really find yourself going up against CDA monsters and everything like that. But right now that's not an issue. So yeah, I'm foregoing the AoE trade disable and I'm foregoing the single... 50% chance to possess, even though potentially could be useful. It might come in clutch sometimes. But this is the main skill set for this monster. In terms of relics, look at that. She can recover stamina for the whole entire team. Actually, this is one situation where instead of that one, if you have this one, after damaging the skill, removes stamina from damaged enemies and gives to the wearer when the turn ends. Oh, not sacred staff, sorry. 
Uh, where's the, oh shoot, I don't have the other one. Um, tier, this one, only owned, only missing. Uh, this one, equal areas, when the turn starts, if any ally stamina. So if you can have an equal area staff, that increases anyone's stamina, that'll be useful. And after damaging with skill, no, no. If you, yeah, if you can have this one or Cane of Atlantis, it might work out better, once again, because you want to be able to, um, you want to be able to recover your next monster's stamina. Whereas the, the, this one will only trigger if you, the wearer, are below uh, the 50% stamina mark. So I'm actually going to go Cane of Atlantis. Yeah, because I don't have the other one. And then we're going to go Revival. I mean, straightforward. You revive. If you die, you come back. That's one of the things that makes you even better. And then, um, in terms of these right now, there's nothing too, too crazy, I would say, that's a must-have for her. Maybe something that increases life uh, after being damaged. This one gives an armor, so we're, we want her to be sustainable and stay alive as long as possible. We'll do that. In terms of a rune setter for this monster, there's there's a few things you can do. Um, one is team speed. Have her go at the very end and just cleanse and do that kind of stuff. One is have her go before your attacker. And considering she is a new uh, Blossom monster, if you're combining her with Doom's monster, if they're running team speed, you will inherently be faster. Um, you could also give her three speed because you want her to trade disable first. So we're going to go the three speed route, actually. And maybe... Let's see. Yeah, I need a... We'll do a level 9. That's fine. All right, so we're going to go... We're going to make her faster than all of my other monsters. So we're going to do team speed on my secondary monster. Actually, guys, I'm just going to take her to rank 5 because I want to showcase her maxed out. And so I can do two... I want to do two speed team speed on her. Two speed team speed on my, like, a deny monster. And then we'll have a Megaton monster. We'll try an attacker. We'll, we'll do different things. Actually, for this first one, I think I want to try an ET attacker like Shiv. So we'll see how it works. So this allows me to do two team speed, single speed. Again, the main thing is I want to be able to remove positive effects, especially if they have an evasion, uh, because a lot of bases we take on slum surge and like bare modices. So I want to be able to deal with that and then trade disable and then Shiv is free to attack and eliminate the other monsters. We'll see how well this works or doesn't work. And then Pango is there to protect my monsters because, well, I need to be protected, right? So let's see how this works out. By the way, for those of you new to the channel, um, since I am using monsters that SP gave me, I'm not allowed to win the battles. That would be unfair to win with monsters that haven't even yet been released. So if it comes to it, I'm just going to exit out. Let's click fight. They have a vault. This might get annoying. Okay, so perfect. So this is a good showcase right here. She is going to allow you to do things like this. We have a status caster empty. So we're going to remove positive effects. Boom, done. Next, you are going to go ahead and do the trade disable. Notice if I had the team trade disable, Dodge area, dodge area, so it wouldn't work. This is why I'm, I'm really thinking the single trade disable is more valuable. So, simple trade disable, and then your denier can go and deny, or your attack can go and attack. Um, it's really up to you at this point. The important thing is, now I can kill the main threat, which is Volt, right here. So, let's see. Chosen Prey, 89, 111, and then this would obviously kill. So we are going to make him weak to magic attacks. Dead. All right. Pain, deadly aim. I wonder if I can do... Pain. Okay, cool. So we're gonna we're gonna actually double damage. We're gonna kill um, Uriel. He's also a threat, right? Because he can bring back Volt, and then we'll kill him again with the Chosen Prey, and then we'll kill Volt. And there, that's what she allows you to do. This is the kind of stuff this monster allows you to, do, which is why I am really, really considering purchasing her, especially for the first week when there's not gonna be other monsters using rank up survival dungeon. I can just start investing in her and ranking her up. Um, I don't want to buy her at rank three <laughs> or rank five. So I would have to get her unranked, and I want to say it's $30 for a monster, which is so steep considering the Golden Legends Pass offers the best value, 20 bucks, and you get a rank 3 monster and a bunch of rewards for the whole month. Ha, huh, but I might consider it. Alright, here is a good showcase, really good showcase, where we can, um, where Slumster always does evasion. In this case, I need a cleanse though. Another good reason, if the, AI, if the AI is doing, if the enemy is doing Demonic Pack, why you want um, something like her to run this skill because I can actually remove the negative effects first, right? In this case, watch what I'm going to do though. I'm actually going to do Blessing to remove it from my Shiv. I don't care if I die. I have Revival. I'm going to remove positive effects right here and then I'm going to trade Disable. So I'm going to lose her. That's fine with me. She'll come back to life thanks to her Revival Essence. Look at that. She's back to life and now I'm free and able to kill Uriel. Uh, let's see. Do you have 7 Sins? It would be ideal if you had 7 Sins. No, no 7 Sins. That would have been awesome. Um, because I have the torture immunity, right? All right, we're gonna do make you weak to magic attacks. Success. 
Pump seed stuff, deadly aim, let's see, pain, 167, yeah, we're gonna deadly aim, gonna kill Uriel, dead, kill Uriel again, dead, and now we can go for Marimotus, and just like that, this is the kind of stuff she allows you to do, this is why I really enjoy her, she's almost like a Chiao Long, um, but she works really well, so, so far, the, the, the era hasn't impressed me, with the exception of her, I think, amazing, and look, now I can heal, and now I can remove, here's a blessing, here's a removal, Let's uh, remove your positive effects. Let's trade disable over here now. So now I've trade disabled um, him again. So now I can attack Slumster. So now Slumster is going to die. Marimotus is not a threat. So we just got to kill Slumster. Boom. There. Just like that. So she's winning battles. Like, just by being able to trade disable. So she works really well with a Megaton and an ET attacker like you're seeing here. Um, Even if the enemy has anticipation. Like, maybe one turn you, trade disable, next turn you, cycle, and then trade disable. Hopefully we run into the... Oh, Poseidon, yeah, perfect. Artifact monster, perfect. Alright, so, I don't care for the poison. Oh, there's a torture immunity, right? I just got hit with the poison beast. Doesn't matter. Torture immunity. We're gonna go straight into... We don't need to do anything else. So we're gonna go straight into the trade disable. Here's a good example, though, of where the AOE trade disable would have been better. Because I could have gotten rid of the torture immunity. I could have gotten rid of the artifact. But nope, we want to deal with Poseidonia. So, single trade disable. And now we're free to kill her. So, vulnerable. And then we'll just cycle into the trade disable next turn and kill someone else. Um, deadly aim. We'll do pain. Alright. Uh, we'll double damage. And we will... Uh, we just want to go for you. We want to finish you off. Boiling. Um, would you die? You probably would die. But we're just going to pain regardless. And death mark. Now let's go for you. Boom. Uh, I might lose a... Yeah, I'm going to lose Pango for sure. But that is fine. Rotten berries. That is all fine. All right, so what are we going to do? Well, let's get rid of this. Um, blessing, I don't need to do it. It just allows me to cycle, and I don't need to do this either. Let me check what they have. Nothing. Slumsters trap, nothing. So, um, I am... I don't really need to trade disable him, to be honest. So, I'm just going to go trade disable here. Yeah, I don't need to trade disable since I already have the element of advantage. I guess for burnt blood, but irrelevant. Damage boost. Pain. Now I'm able to attack over here, and now I can land Burnt Blood. So let's make you vulnerable, trade disable, boom, and then Blessing. What do we need to do? Nothing really. I guess we could heal by 30. We don't need to right now. Um, healthy Villain. Oh, you had Hidden Ship? I didn't realize. I will just recharge, actually. I will do Blessing. There we go. Yay, Torture Immunity, and I got to heal. <laughs> and I get Life Regen, so now it works so well with the ET. So actually, this is a good showcase. Um, In in my other videos, using the other monsters that are more deniers, like Arc Druid. And um, Torbo uh, Torbox, maybe. Um, you you'll see her. I'll partner her up with a Denier. So this is more of, of a trade disable attacker kind of setup. But I'm really enjoying her. And I knew I was going to enjoy her. Ooh, the triple nature team. Another example where AoE would have been nice, but I don't really need it. And the single trade disable works just as well. So we're going to go ahead and go into the trade disable right away. Actually, I could cleanse here. But... I don't think it matters, so... Yeah, we're gonna go straight into the trade disable. So, trait disable. Yeah, that life region, everything doesn't matter. Oh shoot, I'm alive! I'm alive! Alright, well I'm gonna die next. Um, let's make you weak. Tiny's amulet, jazz mask, pump seed stuff. Let's hit you with 167k damage. Let's damage boost. Let's chosen prey. Burnt blood, and let's finish you off. And then we even get to attack over here. Yeah, I, sh I could have gotten rid of Evasion and attack Slumster, but that's fine. All right. Um, if I would have survived, I would have been able to cleanse. That would have been nice. All right. Uh, it looks like we need to cleanse. Cleansing is good. Uh, blessing. I don't really need to. Uh, life regen. You know what? I will just give life regen just to so have ET attacks, and I will trade disable. That way we can hit him with burnt. Uh, well, we always could hit him with burnt blood, but now it's just easier. All right, I don't have stamina. See, if she would have had stamina region, I told you it would have been like even more powerful. All right, if I die, I come back to life, so I'm not really scared. Um, let's see. You know what? I guess we have to attack you. Yeltron's mask, maybe not. Looks like it's a recharge. Package bomb. Looks like I need to. Um, I'm just gonna heal. Remove negative effects. Heal. Torch immunity. Ryan bananas. Take that. And there is my talent protecting me. All right, now we can do it. Um. Attack you. It's going to take a while since I'm... Oh, all that stamina drain. Alright, recharge. Let's see if I can come back from this. Recharge. Healthy villain. Oh, no, I lost my attacker. So, unfortunate there. I think I did the best I could. 
have done. But yeah, we, we took out Poseidon, yeah, so that was good. And they were just too tanky, and my Shiv kept getting stamina drained. Um, so once I get Tatuman's Mask on her, oof, she's going to be deadly. Um, mm, do we need to play this one? Not really. I guess we can just showcase trade disabling. I don't know. Sure, why not? So starting off with Poison. Um, ha, look at that. Torch immunity. Oh, it is so nice to be fighting against beasts, and then that gets cleansed away. So yeah, just showing the trade disable. Again, team trade disable, not going to do well, unfortunately. In PvP, but single trait disable, spot on, guys, because then you can attack whoever you want. And once again, we'll showcase her with deniers later on in other videos. So I'm starting off with shock. Ah, torture immunity. Take that, Thunder Beast. Take that. So we're taking on Teddy Bomb, Memory Wipe. All right. Um, in this case, let's see. Blessing to per let's make sure he doesn't have Ancient Cloak. Good. Blessing to protect my poor Pango. I could heal if needed. I don't think he needs it. I could give life regen. You know what? I'm going to do life regen and give the torture immunity to my Pango. All right. Uh, main, main threat, I would say, is eliminate... Ooh, maybe he has seven sins. Demon Wings. Nope. Who gives Demon Wings to Uriel? Uh, we'll eliminate him. He's actually a bigger threat than Teddy Bomb, I would say. Um, we need a boost to kill. Dead. Comes back to life. Chosen Prey, Dead. And let's even kill Raris, funny enough. And watch, he can hit me with his AoE dots. Ah, uh, he didn't. I was hoping he would, and then the torture immunity. But look, cleanse that away. Cleanse this stun. Trade disable you for fun. Yeah, guys, the more I use her, I think I'm going to have to purchase her. She's the best monster of the Blossom era so far. Okay, we'll end with this attack, but I hope you guys enjoyed seeing her with an ET and an MT. Um, fantastic stuff, guys. Fantastic stuff. Oh, look, there's the death countdown again. And look, here's the status caster MT, Divine Energy. So, once again, I don't care about if I die because I can come back to life. So, we'll Blessing, protect my ET monster, we'll cleanse MT. So, MT's gone, and then we trade disable. So, now trade disable's gone. I'm free to attack Teddy Bomb, who's probably the biggest threat. Raris is not that big of a threat, but I'll probably be able to kill Raris too. So, now that I've dealt with Garnixel, here's the guard down. Oh, sorry, guard down. Vulnerable, it didn't land. Uh, Pain, we'll do. Pain, burnt blood kicks in. Oh, he's as good as dead. Uh, deadly aim, and then chosen. Boom, burnt blood. Yeah, so he's as good as dead. Pain, but just to be. I sometimes now you have so many stuff on you. Um, we'll we'll go for Garnixel now. Maybe with burnt blood we'll kill Garn. Oh, I got Simon Jane. Should have done my strong attack. We're good. Dead memories, flashbang. Oh, they killed my. No, they killed my monster. All right, uh, let's see. And he is dead with dots. Yeah, he's dead with dots. And then I'm free to attack. Uh, chosen, I think we're just gonna damage boost and OTK. Can anything else kill? Yeah, everything can kill. Pain trial. Um, and yeah, we'll exit out because I don't wanna continue risk. I think I had damage mirror. If Raros attacked me, he'll reflect damage. So we're good there. So everyone, with that being said, this has been an exclusive first look at Neraida. She is a fantastic monster. Right now, the this is honestly not doing much. But it's going to be a matter of time before we get something really, really good. So she, she's only going to get better, I think. I think her her skill set with the two ETs, with the trade disable, with the cleansing, with the torch immunity, I think her skill set is going to make her last in the meta. Funny enough. And again, war, she's a beast. PvP, it depends. Um, if the enemy is using a lot of anticipation, like if people are using elf, oh, she's going to run into some trouble. But, but you, you have single trade disable still, so... So maybe it's still possible. Like, imagine a situation in which the enemy is not using a Pangoliath, but they're using like a Mer not a Merimotus. Let's say, uh, gosh, who should I use? No, let, let's say the enemy is using a Merimotus and a Elf and maybe Uriel. Like, you are going to be able to get rid of the enemy status caster empty, and then I'll, um, you'll, you'll trigger the extra turn on Elf. Maybe she one-shots you, but then you res. And then you do the AoE trade disable, so you've gotten rid of Anticipation on Elf, and you've gotten rid of the Taunt on Marimotus. Now the problem becomes a third monster. If it's Uriel and it does Catholicon, well then it cleanses, and then they have their Anticipation trait again, and the Taunt trait. But typically the AI won't do Catholicon on turn 1, it'll do like Nimbus and remove positive effects from your team. So you're able to play around it, but she has potential, she has potential, and again, as we get more Blossom talents, she'll probably become even better. So if you don't mind spending money on the game, again, it's, it's a hard sell because it's so much money for one monster. 
But if you don't mind it, I would say she's a phenomenal monster, you guys. But that's it for my exclusive first look on her. Let me know what you guys think about her in the comments below and will you be purchasing her? Also, let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much and remember to subscribe.